So what is the basis of a relationship? Why do human beings need a relationship, first of all? Relationships are formed on different levels, various types of relationships to fulfill different types of needs. The needs may be physical, psychological, emotional, social, financial, political, it could be any kind. But to fulfill various needs within a human being, relationships are established on different levels. Whatever the nature of the relationship, whatever the type of relationship, still the fundamental aspect is you have a need to fulfill. No, I have nothing to get, I want to give. Giving is also as much a need as receiving, isn't it? Yes? I have to give something to somebody. This is also as much a need as I have to receive something. So there is a need, whatever kind of need. Needs may be diverse, accordingly relationships could be diverse. Now, the moment we form a relationship, wanting to fulfill a certain need, and if that need is not fulfilled, then relationships, relationships will go bad. For whatever purpose for which we have formed a relationship, if those needs and those expectations are not fulfilled, relationships will go bad. We may claim many things, but when your expectations are not fulfilled, it does go bad, isn't it? So instead of doing too much wishy-washy about it, it's best to look at it straight and see what is it and how we need to handle it. <clears throat> the needs within a human being have risen because of a certain sense of incompleteness. People are forming relationships to experience a certain sense of completeness within themselves. When you have a good relationship with someone dear to you, you feel complete. When you don't have that, you feel incomplete. Why is this so? Because this life, this piece of life is a complete entity by itself. Why is it feeling incomplete? And why is it trying to fulfill itself by making a partnership with another piece of life? Fundamental reason is that we have not explored this life in its full depth and dimension. Though that is the basis, there is a complex process of relationships as such, there are expectations. And expectations and expectations and expectations. The expectations that most people are creating are such that there is no human being on the planet who could ever fulfill those expectations. If you, especially this man-woman relationship, the expectations are so much that even if you marry a god or a goddess, they will fail you. because the expectations are so unrealistic that nobody, no human being can ever fulfill that. <clears throat> and unable to understand the expectations or the source of expectations, nobody can fulfill the expectations. But if you understand what is the source of this expectation, you could form a very beautiful partnership. Are you okay? You're getting very serious with relationships. 
on a certain day, Jack and Jill, now let me use, I'm trying to just culturally change the joke. <laughs> Jack and Jill were going up the hill. And uh, Jack had a bucket in his hand, a chicken under his arm, and a pitchfork and a rope at the end of which there was a goat. And Jill said, I'm feeling very nervous. Jack said, why? I'm afraid you may have your way with me. I'm alone with you. He said, what do you mean I didn't do anything and my hands are full? So she said, you may put the pitchfork down, plant it in the earth, tie the goat to it, put the chicken down and put a bucket over it, couldn't you? <laughs> and in the process of holding a relationship, the first moment of meeting, the expectations may be common, but as every step that we take in life, the expectations may become different. Because these expectations keep changing in people, they are not cons consistent and they cannot be. One person may be consistent with the same expectation throughout their life, another person's expectations may be changing because his perception and experience of life is changing. Now relationships become great conflict. More conflict is happening within the four walls of the homes than is happening anywhere on the planet. Only thing is bombs are not exploding so you don't hear it. They may be giving each other silent treatment. It is happening because people's expectations are changing and they are not changing at the same pace. They are changing at different pace. One person is changing fast, another person is not so fast about how to change their expectations. So if you go about doing management and circus with these things, there is no way you can gauge it one hundred percent and have a beautiful relationship. If you try to mind read the other person and constantly try to fulfill their expectations, you will become a wreck. You tried those things, isn't it? You're trying to, you know, outdo the other person in really wanting to fulfill all their expectations, you become a wreck. So if you go like this, it's an endless circus. To some extent you have to do it, but that is not the basis of a beautiful relationship. Fundamentally, why have we sought a relationship? Because your brilliant management, you will see, it will just give you hell. <laughs> the smartest people on the planet are those people who think they are really smart tend to have the most horrible relationships, not essentially but generally. People, somebody who is just simple, they have wonderful relationships because it is not a question of management. Nobody like to be, likes to be managed by you, you need to understand that, yes? Nobody likes to be managed by you. When they realize you are managing them, They'll give you help. In so many ways they'll make your life miserable. Please see, for most people on this planet, it is not their enemies who are taking their life, it is their loved ones. Isn't it so? Yes? If your enemy is taking your life, there is some sense to it. But people care for each other, but they are the people who are taking each other's life. Isn't it? Isn't it so? This is happening constantly. Generation after generation, people are going through the same things.
because they believe the other person has to be managed. You don't try to manage the other person. You see how to include the other person. Then even if you don't understand what the hell is happening with the other person, still it is okay. You don't have to understand every damn thing that the other person is. It is the inclusion that the other person is seeking, not really that you have to understand every maya, every thought and every emotion. In fact, they'll feel threatened if you understand everything. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> People will feel very threatened if you seem to understand just about everything. They'll get scary. <laughs> People are not looking for understanding. Though they claim they're looking for understanding, what they're looking is for inclusion, isn't it? It is inclusiveness that you're seeking in a relationship. Understanding could be very threatening. So, managing relationships is not what needs to be done. You need to understand, first of all, why you need a relationship. Somewhere there is some sense of incompleteness. If you take away this, if you attain to that state within you, which has nothing to do with the other, then you will see every other wants to be with you. Everybody wants to be with you because your need is gone. This is the funny thing about life. When you have a need, nobody wants to be with you. When your need is gone, everybody wants to be with you <laughs> It's only when the flower blossoms, the bees will come. If you don't blossom, bees won't come. You're a closed bud and calling the bees, they won't come. If you open up, you don't have to call, they'll anyway come. So, if you want to have wonderful relationships, do not try to manage the relationship. See how to enhance who you are. Who you are on all levels, physically, mentally, emotionally, energy-wise. See how to up this. If you enhance yourself into a very beautiful state, everybody wants to hold a relationship with you. Instead of enhancing this one, you are trying to manage this. No, it doesn't work. So, if human beings have to really have wonderful relationships, first and foremost thing that they need to do is how to take, to take this to this ultimate possible level right now. If you take, keep yourself in the best possible way, in body, mind and emotion, do people want to be with you? Yes? Do people want to be with you? Definitely, isn't it? Now you don't keep yourself well in any of these levels, and you expect people to be with you, now you become a burden. Now the other is hell. <laughs> so a human being should always and always and always focus on how to enhance his way of being. Then everything else gets naturally managed. Whether it's your profession or your relationship or whatever else in your life will happen to its best only when who you are is enhanced. If you do not enhance this and try to manage all those things, that is going to be very stressful. It's going to be a very, very stressful life. Relationships probably are causing the maximum amount of stress on this planet. Am I right? Hmm? It is. And as people get more educated and they think they are more modern, they are having more problems having any kind of relationship with anybody, isn't it? Isn't it so? Education should have widened our horizons of life, but it looks like it has compressed everything in such a way that you can't get along with anybody. Isn't this happening? Isn't this happening worldwide? There was a time, even now in India, in some parts, a family means it is two hundred, three hundred people in one home. One large home, two hundred, three hundred people living together, because family means the main, you know, grandfather, grandmother, uncles, aunts, granduncles, granduncles, granduncles grand aunts, cousins, everybody is one family. As we got l little more educated, we thought these uncles and aunts damn them. 
we dropped them. We thought family means husband, wife, children, parents. Then after a while we thought, my parents are okay but her parents are… <laughs> let's drown them somewhere <laughs> Then we thought, let's drop both the parents. We thought family means husband, wife, children. Now children are thinking, it is not so. <laughs> now it is becoming such that even two people, the couple are not able to live together. Only if they meet once in a while, they're okay. Weekend marriage is all right. Through the week, impossible. It's becoming like that because we are becoming more and more exclusive, not inclusive. The whole modern societies are encouraging exclusiveness. Exclusiveness will lead to depression, isn't it? Yes? People are depressed like never before on this planet, do you know this? Never before humanity had known these kind of comforts and conveniences. Never before has humanity enjoyed this kind of food security on the planet, never before. Never before has humanity enjoyed this kind of health security on the planet, but never before humanity has been this depressed because they can't get along with anybody. They have become too exclusive. Inclusiveness is a relationship. Exclusiveness naturally leads to depression. Yoga means ultimate inclusiveness. The word yoga literally means union. When I say yoga, don't think that I'm talking about a particular way of knotting your limbs or holding your breath or standing on your head. No. Anything that leads to the union is called yoga, whichever way. So there are… how many ways are there to reach to your ultimate union with life or with everything? You can only work with what you have, isn't it? Is that so? Can you work with something that you do not have? No, that's clear, isn't it? So what is it that you call as myself right now? Your body, your mind, your emotion? Your energies may not be in your experience but you can easily infer and see if this one has to function like this, there is some kind of energy making this happen, right? That much everybody can understand. Right now we may not understand how this microphone works but because it is amplifying the sound, we can understand there's some kind of energy source behind this, either a battery cell or a powerhouse but some kind of energy source is behind this. So these are the four realities for you – body, mind, emotion and energy. If you employ your body and try to reach your ultimate nature, we call this karma yoga, yoga of action. If you employ your intelligence and try to reach your ultimate nature, we call this gnana yoga, yoga of intelligence. If you employ your emotion and try to reach your ultimate nature, we call this bhakti yoga, yoga of devotion or emotion. If you transform your inner energies and try to reach your ultimate nature, we call this kriya yoga, yoga of transforming energies. These are the only four ways you can do it because these are the only four things that you really have. Rest is imagination. They may be there but not in your experience. What is not in your experience is not a reality for you, isn't it? Right now, Modern science is talking about eleven parallel dimensions right here. That's not in your experience, isn't it? Not yet a reality for you. You can only make a theory out of it. You can only believe it, but not yet a reality for you. You cannot work with it. Only when it comes into your experience, you can work with it. So these are the only four realities. This is a very beautiful story in the yogic lore. Are you okay for the story? Can I tell you a story? I seek your permission because the moment I say once upon a time, many people think it's bedtime. <laughs> that's the only time they heard that word, once upon a time, before three sentences are over. 
So once upon a time, on a certain day, four men were walking in the forest. Among these four men, one is a bhakti yogi, another is a jnana yogi, karma yogi and kriya yogi. That means yoga of intelligence, yoga of devotion, yoga of action and yoga of transforming energies. These four people can never be together. But today they were walking together in the forest. Why I'm saying they can never be together is somebody who follows the path of the intellect, he of course thinks everybody is dumb stupid. Especially the devotees who are doing Ram Ram or whatever else, they look utterly stupid for the man of intellect. Isn't it so? Yes? People are bowing down and praying and calling for God. These people look utterly stupid for a man of intellect. So he thinks they are just idiots. But somebody who is on the path of devotion thinks, has pity for everybody because when God is here, instead of holding his hand and walking in absolute freedom, all this nonsense with your mind and your body and all the yoga and everything is just stupid. He has pity for everybody because just instead of riding on the lap of God, why all this nonsense? Karma Yogi, the man of action, he firmly believes all the others are just lazy people who are trying to find an explanation or an excuse for their laziness because if you want something to happen, you got to do it. Yes? Because you're lazy. You're unwilling to do, you're finding all kinds of philosophies. He has disdain. A Kriya Yogi has absolute disdain for everybody because after all the whole existence is energy. If you do not transform your energy, what is going to happen? Nothing. Everything is just empty talk. So these four people cannot be together. But today they were walking together in the forest and a rainstorm broke loose and to escape the rain they started running. Then the bhakti yogi, the man of devotion said, in this direction there is an ancient temple, we could go and take shelter there because he knows the geography of temples. So they ran in that direction. After some time they came to this ancient temple, the walls had collapsed long ago, just the roof and four columns were standing. They went in and the rain and the storm picked up momentum and started lashing from every direction. To escape this, they went closer and closer to the center. In the center there was an image of God and there was no other place to sit because Rain was lashing from every direction. To escape this, all the four of them just hugged and huddled around this image of God. Suddenly God appeared. The first question in everybody's mind is, why now? So much yoga we did, so much worship we did, you did not come. Now when we're just trying to escape the rain, why now? Then God said, at last you four idiots got together. <laughs> I was waiting for this. So if you want to get somewhere, all these four aspects, body, mind, emotion and energy has to function together. Only then you get somewhere. With one aspect you don't get anywhere. Every one of you is a combination of these four things, but a different kind of combination, a unique combination. This is also body, mind, emotion and energy. That is also body, mind, emotion and energy. But it's very different because these four things have come together in different ways in every person. So accordingly, the right kind of yoga has to be mixed in the right proportion. Otherwise, it doesn't work. I give this person one kind of yoga, if I give the same to th that person, it will not work because he is a different combination of the same four ingredients. 
It is because of this in the yogic traditions. So much stress has been laid about having a live guru because he will mix the right kind of concoction. Unless it is mixed properly, even if it's the best thing, it doesn't work. What is working wonderfully for one person is not working for the other person because it is wrong prescription. Medicine is good but wrong prescription. So, if these four things are handled properly, only then this one moves ahead. What these four dimensions mean is head, heart, hands and energy. Is there anybody here who is just one big head, no heart at all, no hands at all, no energy? Or one big heart, not the other things? You are a combination of these four things, isn't it? Each one may be a unique combination of these four things. Because each one is a unique combination of these four things, relationships cannot be managed. Relationships can never be managed because each one is a unique combination of these four things. If you handle these four things properly, you can include the other as a part of yourself. In this inclusion, all the differences are okay. Differences add color and dimension to our life. Always the problem with the other person is that he doesn't think like you and feel like you, isn't it? Can you imagine in your house, if there was one more person like you, could you live there? <laughs> that would be horror, isn't it? <laughs> Fortunately, nobody else is like you. <laughs> Fortunately, nobody else is like you. If all the people in your home were just like you, could you live there? But that's what you're complaining about, that they're different. <laughs> what is adding color and dimension to your life, that is what you're complaining about. What is good for you, you're complaining because there is no sense of inclusiveness. If you have included the other as a part of yourself, all these differences you could enjoy. See, now the very fundamentals of this man-woman relationship is a man seeks a woman and a woman seeks a man because they're different, isn't it? Yes? Because it is different. If they were just like you, it's no good. In every way they're different, in body, in mind, in emotion, they're different. That's why you seek them, isn't it? If everything was same, then you didn't have to seek them. But after you get together, now you expect the other person just to be like you, to think like you, to feel like you, to act like you. This is a disaster if it ever gets fulfilled. Fortunately, nobody fulfills it for you, but if it ever so happens that your expectation is fulfilled, that's going to be the biggest disaster. You must be very glad lot of your expectations are not fulfilled. If they are, you're finished. Please look at it. If all your expectations are fulfilled, your life will be a much bigger disaster than it not being fulfilled, isn't it? So relationships are a longing for inclusiveness and if you approach it as such and include the other as a part of yourself, however they are, whichever way they are, they will be just fine with you. They'll be just wonderful for you. But if there's no inclusiveness, if you stand away and look at them and study them and see how to manage them, then whichever way they are, they're impossible. They're just impossible. You know, we have programs, regular programs going on for the last sixteen years in the prisons in South India and also in a few prisons in United States. I have a lot of friends who are in. <laughs> and about twenty percent of our time and energies are spent in the prison and all the South Indian prisons, it's mandatory now that our programs go on regularly. So people keep asking me, Sadhguru, why are you spending so much time with these criminals? Yes, they have committed all kinds of acts. These are people, if you look at their history sheets, uh, there are murders, rapes and drug addiction and a million other things, every kind of thing that a human being can do and cannot do, <laughs> that's been done. 
If you let these people out tomorrow morning, maybe fifty percent of them, at least fifty percent of them will repeat the same things. It is so. Fifty percent of them may look for alternative way of living, at least fifty percent of them will repeat the same thing. This is how they are. But when I am with them, they're just wonderful guys. They're absolutely lively, exciting and wonderful people. It is just that. If you include somebody as a part of yourself and if you are not seeking anything from them and you're just a joyful presence for them, when they're happy, any human being, when he is happy, he's a wonderful human being, isn't it so? Yes? If you meet any kind of person when he is very happy, he is a wonderful person. But if you meet the same person when he is unhappy, he could be really nasty. You are so too, isn't it? Yes? If somebody meets you when you are happy, you are just great. If somebody meets you when you are unhappy, it's another game, isn't it? <laughs> so somebody is become ugly, somebody is becoming ugly or beautiful, not because they are ugly or beautiful, because they are joyful or not joyful. When they are joyful, everybody is beautiful. When they are not joyful, everybody is ugly. Isn't it so? Yes? So we are trying to… the problem with us is we are always… if we are growing a garden, we are trying to focus on the flower and the fruit. It is not the flower and the fruit that you should focus on, it is the root that you need to focus on. If you nurture the root, the flowers will fall on your head anyway, even if you don't look for it. You don't have to sit there and pray for flowers and fruits. If you nurture the root, flowers and fruits will anyway happen. That's so with the garden and that's so with your life. Rather than nurturing the roots, you are constantly seeking the flower and fruit. Flower and fruit will not come. If you do not nurture the roots, you can know about it. Dream is all yours, but that is also not true. You cannot dream what you want, isn't it so? Please look at the tragedy of life. People cannot even dream what they want. <laughs> Nightmares come <laughs>